Today we're looking at upscale nylon string guitars from steel string manufacturers. Today we're going to compare these two very different nylon string guitars from Taylor and from Furch. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that like button. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. And, you know, you can buy stuff from us, too. Um, so we are looking at some high-end uh, nylon string guitars, not classical guitars, but these come from steel string guitar manufacturers that are really designed to be a crossover model. So for you who are typically a steel string player and you want to have something in your collection, you want to add that sound of a nylon string, but maybe a classical guitar in the traditional sense is uncomfortable for you, there are a number of options out there from a host of different companies. Both Taylor and Furt... Furch. 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 Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Can you do the pronunciation correctly? No? Yeah, I can't either. If so, I, even if I try, it would just sound stupid. People will just criticize us who can't, yeah. so I'll say Furch. Um, they make fantastic steel string guitars, and their nylon string offerings are really unique in that they are giving you some fantastic playability for the steel string player with that nylon tone. Uh, but these guitars are also very, very different. Yeah. Um, I feel like the Furch that I have in my lap is a little bit more traditional classic, maybe if only in the sense of the tone woods and the fact that it's 12 fret mm -hmm. versus the 814CE nylon that Cooper's holding. Uh, so we're going to talk about the specs and kind of what you could experience and why you might want one of these. Um, and maybe we should start there. So yeah. why would someone want not a traditional class over, but something that's like, or classic, but something that's like a nylon crossover guitar? I think for me, it comes down to wanting that voice available to you. Um, because a lot of times, you know, you might have, if you're an electric guitar player, you really want something with humbuckers, maybe it's, you know, and you play single coils, you can try to figure out some shortcut to getting that mm -hmm. tone. Um, and I kind of feel the same way with different tone woods on a steel string guitar. I mean, you're never gonna get a spruce rosewood sound out of a spruce mahogany guitar. Mm -hmm. But with EQing and, you know, maybe switching your strings up, like you can pick up some of that, those frequencies somewhere, but you really can't get classical tone without nylon strings. And you can't really put nylon string guitar or nylon strings on a steel string guitar. And you know, this is actually something that comes up a lot. Um, I've seen it in emails. We've had people come in and ask in the store. I've seen it a on lot. Reddit chats. Quite a bit. Like, uh, can I do this? And some people, will, I, I actually posted on Reddit, someone had a, the ball end nylon strings. Oh, that's for steel string guitars. It's not, <laughs> it's not. No. Here's the problem. Nylon strings offer a lot less tension to the top of the guitar, okay? So that's the first problem. These guitars are braced very differently from a steel string guitar because there's less tension. So you don't have to have as heavy of a bracing. So if you take a steel string guitar that's more heavily braced for the additional tension of steel strings and you put nylon strings on it, it's not going to perform very well because you can't drive the top. Say someone says, well, I don't care about that. Okay, fine. You're still going to have the trouble of how do you get the strings um, on the bridge. Now, if you have a pass-through pinless bridge, you might be able to do it, although the string uh, gauge that it's drilled for probably won't work. Uh, if you have a pin bridge, like most steel string guitars, you're not going to be able to get that to work. Say you got that to work, it's probably not going to be accommodated on the traditional steel string tuning posts because... Those are made for a different diameter of string. These strings are a little bit thicker. And that's the other part. Because they're a little bit thicker, the space that's needed to be comfortable is a little bit wider than on a traditional steel string guitar. So they're different, and the guitars have to be different as a result. On a classical guitar, it's a really, really wide nut, comparatively. So you typically have a two-inch nut on a traditional classical guitar, fairly thick neck usually, and no radius. Yeah. And the radius is the curvature of the fretboard that we're talking about. Yeah. So on a steel string guitar, you're used to a 15 or 16 inch radius. On a classic or on an electric guitar, it could be 12, 10, nine and a half, seven, seven and, and a quarter. quarter. It could be really, really curvy. And so if you're going from one of those to a classical guitar, it is a very uncomfortable transition. Yeah. 
And so these exist. Yeah, just think of them as different instruments. Yep. Because they are. But something like this, um, even with some of Cordoba's stuff, like their crossovers, I, I feel like it's been always popular, but it's just maybe been a little more visible to me recently, the type of people that they want to come in, they don't want a super, you know, they don't want a two inch nut width, they want a little bit of a radius, and they want to be able to get up the neck a little mm -hmm. bit, plug in. I think that kind of fusion or crossover, however you want to refer to it, they've uh, found a lot of good homes with people that really just want to get that sound, but have it be a little more comfortable. I heard there. someone call them bossa nova guitars once. I'm like, okay, okay, that's cool. That's whatever you want. Uh, yeah. So typically you'll see them with a cutaway. You'll typically see them equipped with electronics as well <laughs> so that you can plug them in, and that is the case with both of these guitars. So, But these are higher end, all solid wood from fantastic guitar manufacturers. So let's go through the specs on these. Now I'm holding a, this is a GNC4. GNC yeah. dash CR. So GNC4 dash CR, it's cedar and East Indian Rosewood, which is one of my favorite combinations and I think is extremely appropriate for nylon strings because cedar as a top wood is such a soft wood that it really shines with the lower tension um, of nylon strings. Um, you've got some really just beautiful appointments on this guitar. So it's an all gloss finish. They've added a uh, transparent pick guard, which I think is a nice touch on this. It's got a really cool bridge design. Um, you've got a really simple rosette that's going on here. The whole body is framed in faux tortoise shell. So only faux tortoises were sacrificed in the making of this guitar. Your, tr tr <laughs> yeah, your traditional classically blank fretboard. Uh, which is normal for classical guitars, and I really like it. Yeah, um, I love that aesthetic. I, I think one of my next, like, if I get another custom steel string guitar made, I, I won't have really anything cool. on the fretboard. Yeah, um, you get really nice LR bags pickup in this with the controls accessible through the sound hole here, which also has tortoise shell kind of coloring, which is a nice Very little cool. tie-in. Mahogany neck, slotted headstock, of course, with really beautiful simplified ornamentation yeah. um, on there. And I like the amber-colored tuning buttons. Um, it's just a really beautiful guitar. Now, since it is, this is something that not all kind of hybrid crossover nylon string guitars have. It does have both your input jack with a place for your strap, but also a strap button up on the heel of the neck. That one does too. As does this. Um, yeah. Sometimes we see guitars that don't have that, and I think it's a nice touch because it does make a nod that this is stage ready. I would also be very hesitant to put a classical strap yeah um, yeah so. you you probably don't want to do that and adding one is kind of a pain in the butt yeah particularly depending upon how the neck is done and on both of these guitars the neck is a bolt-on affair and uh both of them have some structure inside of the wood to ensure that the neck stays straight and true to the body um it's it's the cnr there's something C, that, cnr yeah. yeah is what Furch calls their structure the nt neck which is different but uh taylor's uh, iteration uh, of a bolt-on neck that they have perfected yeah, uh, over the years. So absolutely. Um, so that's this, and then the A14 is a bigger guitar that's different. It's very different, um, and obviously we've talked ad nauseum about the regular A14 CE on this channel, the flagship of Taylor. Um, this is the A14 CE nylon. You'll notice that a few things aesthetically are different. There's no pick guard, different bridge design, mm -hmm. still ebony, ebony fingerboard. Um, stripey ebony. Yeah, very, very stripey ebony, which looks great. Um, now, the inlay. Yes. Is that different? Nope. Are you positive? Nope. You're not positive. I'm not positive. Look at that. It looks a little different. It looks a little like different. The slightest difference. The motif is the same, and yeah. it might be exactly the same, but it threw me off because yeah, I think I don't, it might be right. a tiny bit different. I don't think it's different. the exact same as a four. That's weird. It is weird, yeah. Because, um, I mean, from a distance, you, at a glance, you're like, yeah, that's exactly the same. Yeah. And then you get close and go, ah. Yeah. But back to the things that we do know. Um, Sitka spruce top, East Indian rosewood back and sides. Love the maple binding. Mm -hmm. That's one of the prettiest parts I about the bindings too. Around the sound hole, too, yeah. which I like. I like bound yeah. sound holes. I think it's an extra little touch. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, you know, really simple back, but you do have the strip of maple going mm -hmm. down. Pretty, just classic rosewood. Mahogany neck, slotted headstock. And are those Taylor tuners, do they make their uh, I'm tuners? pretty sure they source those from Ping, yeah. which is the same. Either I'm pretty way. sure they source yeah. the Taylor branded ones from Ping too, but I don't know. But you got tuners on there, which will be a huge help. They're good know? quality tuners yeah. and um, with the pearl buttons. Like Chris said, 
This is not a V-class braced guitar nope. because nylon string guitars need different bracing. So if you see the white nut, white. it's not like this is, oh, this is before they did V-class. This is how you get them now. It's not a V-class braced yep. guitar. Um, but I do really like on their nylons that they don't do a pick guard. I mm -hmm. think it's a great look. There are, we have done a lot of 812 CE nylons mm -hmm. recently, a little bit smaller body, and I think those are cool. But something about this, just a little bit more oomph, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I think it's a really cool guitar that we have not had in the store for a long time. And so we got it in at the same exact time as this. Um, but this is really kind of, this is a 14 fret. Yeah, yeah. Th so this is a fun comparison for a number of reasons. Yeah. Uh, they're both fantastic builders that we really like. They're both all solid wood construction. It's about where the difference stops. They are both acoustic electric. This one is a smaller body. It is a thinner body. It is also rosewood, but with a cedar top that changes the tone and response dramatically. Um, that is a 14 fret. It's a bigger guitar, deeper guitar. Um, it has Taylor's pickup system instead of the bags that this has. Um, and it just feels different. Like the tension feels different on them. The neck, of course, feels different because that's got two frets free of the body that this one doesn't. Um, so, yeah, they. what's interesting is <laughs> initially grabbing that one out of the case, I just was like, man, the strings feel so slack. Yeah. It's just like, where'd the tension go? Uh, <laughs> And then after I played with them a bit, I felt right at home. So, yeah. you know, it's one of those things. Anyways, I put them both through their paces, playing uh, a, what I think is a lovely rendition on them. So, uh, but you can be the judge of that. And really try to showcase kind of the response and the nuance of the tone between these two guitars. So, take a listen.
So there you have it. And I didn't play any traditional classical pieces, for one, because really good classical players would probably come and, and attack me with pitchforks and, you know, burn me an effigy or something. But uh, two, that's not what these guitars are designed to be. They are designed for you, the steel string player, that wants to play your pieces with a different tonality. Um, and I think they're fantastic. They're both really, really nice guitars. Yeah. Um, do you ever go to Cold Stone Creamery? Yes, I go to Cold Stone Creamery. I like their um, sweet cream with some fresh strawberries put in. So if you, I mean, you've put some strawberries on that. That's the sweet cream, I think. Mm. But it's got like a little, you know, maybe some chocolate in there or something. This one to me, you ever get coffee lovers only? Ah, yes. This That's... is like a, a nice coffee ice cream with some Heath. <laughs> a little Heath in there, a little chocolate fudge. Okay, th- comment yeah. below, should Cooper begin to add food descriptions uh, or comparison descriptions to our listings on our website for each guitar. I think so. Um, I've always <laughs> loved the look of a crisp white spruce yeah. um, so with creamy. nice dark rosewood. It is very uh, sweet cream to me. It's a really nice top too. So Silked. Yeah, it's silked, which we've talked about before. If you ever get a top and you kind of turn it in the light and you see these like kind of side wave waves, sideways waves, um, that's medullary lines, it's silking, or cross-hatching, I think is another term. Um, it, it's a good indication of a really nice top. Yeah, the grain on there is so straight, but there's so much silking, it's like the ideal. And why put a pit guard on that when the whole thing is so pretty? Uh, on the other end, you got the coffee ice cream over here, and I think it's a good indication of the tone as well. Hmm. This is a little, little darker, yep. uh, you know, you get in deep, but over there, it does have the brightness of the spruce, but they both, um, you know, I think a lot of times we think cedar mahogany mm. on, you know, a lot of entry level uh, classicals. And I like that tone pairing, but it almost seems like it's lacking a little something. I really like the, the rosewood. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like the rose one on here for that reason. And cedar and, particularly tends to bring out those overtones yeah. in rosewood. Yeah, so they're they're really cool options. We've looked at the GNC2 on the channel before. Those remain popular. They're a little different, satin finish, cedar top, mahogany back and sides. Like I said, really nice combination for a nylon string, but just get a little richer tone out of these. Kind of a step up when it comes to a crossover, and they're both... Very pretty to look at, very easy to play. Um, yeah, I think they're cool. Well, and acoustically, I agree with you on the tone. Uh, I think this is brighter, one, because of the spruce top, and two, because of the 14 fret neck. Yeah. You know, it just changes the physics of how the top responds uh, between the tone wood and the placement of the bridge. Uh, so Visually, fantastic. I love on a 12 fret, though. I like how far the Away. space is. I yeah. think it's just really cool. Um, yeah, it, it just adds a different kind of sound output and everything, but. Uh, and you can do whatever on these guitars. I was playing in drop D, by the way. So, um, you know, you can grab a nylon string and do dad gat or whatever, you know, your heart's desire. Don't be afraid to add something to your collection to really experiment and uh, open your horizons. You know, there's one of the, the fallacies in our industry is that if I get a new guitar or a new piece of gear, that'll be the thing that will make me suddenly play better. And a lot of times I will say that is snake oil but there is truth to it when it is something different than what you have because sometimes not all the time it sparks new creativity yeah you know you get a 12 string guitar when you've never had one or you start a new tuning that you've never encountered or you you know switch it up to the tonality of nylon strings and it really can make you a better player because it sends you down a path you otherwise wouldn't have discovered yeah so yeah for sure i would also say that a lot of times people think if i have a nylon string I'm only going to be playing with other people that play classicals and all that. Mm-hmm. I have to stick to a certain genre. Same thing with steel string. Um, and our band, Ramon, our other guitar player, he loves, I mean, he, he's a flamenco guy, yeah. but he's got some really nice Cordobas. And we do these stripped down gigs. And he's on nylon string, I'm on a steel string. And there's kind of some little magic about the combination of those two because they sound so different, but we can play the same melody lines and it sounds more separate, a little more dynamic. And so if you get yourself a nice nylon string, don't be afraid to bring it to the steel string jam and add something a little different. Good call. 
Yeah. Good call. If you're interested in either of these guitars or anything else from these manufacturers or other nylon strings in general, you want to go to our website, which is... AlamoMusic.com. On the money. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we can chat live with you online, and we can help you find the perfect guitar to suit your needs. At the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one you're playing. Sometimes you need to find something new to spark that creative touch, and this might be that. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you like our videos, and you keep coming back for more, and we will keep giving you more. Bye.